Welcome everyone to our very first Celtics Industry Series webinar. We're really excited to be hosting this. When we were deciding what uh, industry we wanted to reach out to first, it was obviously a, no question. It would be teachers because y'all are going through some stuff right now. <laughs> and we really wanted to help with that as much as possible. So we did reach out to Ruth, who um, is a local film instructor as well as much, much more. And she's gonna be helping us today just discuss some of the challenges that everyone has been facing, some of the triumphs everyone has been having. So just to give you an idea of who we are, um, I have Ruth there first. So we'll start with her. So Ruth is our panelist today. She's gonna to be leading the discussion. Um, and she is an instructor here at our local university teaching screenwriting. She's also a producer, a director, an actor, a writer, a community activist. She's pretty much a Jane of all mm -hmm. trades, I guess you would call it. Mm -hmm. um, Ruth, if you wanna go ahead and just maybe add to your, uh, your introduction there a little. <laughs> Hi, thank you so much, Dara. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming out to this. Uh, so yeah, I started out in theater as an actor. And uh, because I live in Newfoundland, I realized I had to do a lot more than that. So over the years, I have become a writer, director, producer in both theater and then in film. Uh, and I kind of made I always worked in film as an actor, but I made the switch over to storytelling uh, behind the screens, uh, behind the camera, sorry. Uh, uh, I guess maybe about 10, 15 years ago, I started working there. So now I, I'm about to release my first feature film in this horrible environment, but <laughs> when everything is maybe online, maybe not happening. Uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to that regardless. So I'm going to make the best of whatever comes our way. And, uh, and I teach, yeah, TV writing at MUN and have done so for the last two years. Great. Thanks, Ruth. So uh, for those of you who don't know, MUN is our local university here in Newfoundland, similar to like a state university. It's a Memorial University of Newfoundland. Um, and then there's myself. I'm Dara. Most of you have probably already spoken to me at some point in your Celtics journey. For those of you who are not currently Celtics users, because it, this isn't just restricted to Celtics users, you will be talking to me hopefully in the future. Um, I do the majority of our customer training here at Celtics, especially for our education clients. And Nicole and I work fairly closely together on some of our marketing initiatives as well. And that leads into Nicole. So Nicole and I share a last name, but we are not related. That's common here <laughs> in Newfoundland. Um, and Nicole is kind of our community manager and marketer extraordinaire. Nicole, do you want to just say a couple of words? Hi, everyone. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you for joining us. I'm really excited to hear about Ruth experiences. Um, we've worked together in a couple things uh, in Newfoundland before, but uh, just so excited that you're all here and uh, really hoping that we can uh, give you some resources, some more info to help you along your journey. Great. Thanks, Nicole. And then in addition to that, we have Junior and Rob here from our support team at Celtic. So they're going to be helping us with the chat, any questions that anyone has while we're presenting. Um, Junior works on our Celtic support team and is also our GVR training specialist. GVR is our game and VR module that some of you may have experienced. And Rob works on our support team and is just an all around go go-to guy for a lot of questions about Celtics. So uh, guys, if you want to just say hi to everyone. Just... Everybody, thanks for uh, <laughs> joining. Hey everybody, how's it going? So we're all a pretty friendly crowd here, as you can tell. Um, and you would have probably spoken to one or, or many of us at some point. Um, Nicole, if you want to go ahead and advance to the next slide. So this is our general agenda for today. We've already covered the housekeeping and introductions. Uh, I did want to give you a couple of updates about Celtics. Uh, one thing uh, you've heard me say, you know, in your Celtics journey, for those of you who are Celtics users, currently we do have a trial underway for any teachers where they get a free education studio till the end of the semester. So if anyone has joined us who is not currently a Celtics user and doesn't have an education studio, please reach out at the end of this webinar and I'll get you connected with the people who can set you up with that trial. Um, as well, I did want to let you know about some very uh, soon upcoming updates to the Celtic system. A lot of our instructors have asked for our uh, notes to be improved in the Celtic studio, and there's a major improvement to notes coming. I believe it's next week. Junior, do you recall if it's going to be next week? I think um, so. That's the hope, yeah. Yeah. Um, so 
you're going to be able to reply to um, notes in, you're going to be able to at people. It's going, to be, it's going to be very exciting. We will be sending out information about it. And then finally, about a week or two after that, we actually are going to have some changes to the admin section of our education studios to help you better manage your students and other uh, Celtics instructors who are working with you. There's going to be some major improvements there. So just so you know, we are constantly improving, taking your feedback and trying to create the things that you need. Um, so, Nicole, if you do want to go ahead to the next slide. So our goals of the webinar today are to discuss the challenges of teaching online. Some of us have experience in that. Some of us, this was our first time doing it. Um, here at Celtics, we're constantly teaching online, but that's very different from managing a classroom online. So with that, you know, we want to help you and talk to you about understanding the challenges that students face with online learning. Um, and as well, Nicole, if you want to just go to the next one there, <clears throat> uh, we want to share strategies and triumphs that people have experienced. So if there's been something amazing that you've realized during this process that you think will help other people, please share it with us. Um, Ruth will be doing that a bit, but we're also expecting that we might get some feedback from you guys as well. And on that, other, on that note, we also might have some resources and tools that we can all share with each other. Um, so we're going to get started with Ruth's experience um, and the way that we're just going to do with this is I'm going to ask Ruth a few questions. She's going to express uh, what's happened in her own experience and then at the end we'll actually be asking you guys to share your experience. So hopefully we're going to have enough time for everyone. I hope we have a lot of participation in that part um, and uh, if not, you know, this is something, this is a conversation that can continue beyond this webinar as well. So if somebody does have things they want to share with everyone else, you can just send that on to me and we will send it on to everyone who was here today. So Ruth, just before um, I guess we'll get started here with the questions, just to get a general overview, before March and everything uh, <laughs> locking down with COVID-19, what did a class typically look like for you? Yeah, it looked pretty different from how the term ended. We started um, teaching, I, I was, my classroom was in the science uh, in the science building. So we were in a regular classroom. It looked like any regular high school classroom to me. Wasn't the ideal circumstances for sure. And I had expressed that the year before, but it's what we had. So students were, you know, bringing in their laptops uh, and teaching, uh, sorry, and, and, um, and learning uh, from me, teaching them uh, through lectures and in-class exercises. Uh, this year, because of the way the university schedule worked, they combined our twice weekly class into one class. So I taught once a week from five till 9.30. And if any of you have taught screenwriting, you'll know that that, that that gave a particular challenge because I was lecturing, there was no time for reflection in between on, on uh, you know, the next, point in the syllabus that we were kind of getting to uh, before the what I would call the labs. So I would teach a lecture normally, we would do some in-class exercises, and then the next night would be our lab in which they'd do exercises on their own uh, original idea that they brought to class. So it changed because um, suddenly we weren't all together. It was quite challenging, actually, to be um, to be then faced with trying to trying to give personal uh, attention to students f over uh, any online uh, platform. I, I tried a couple, and I found them both challenging. Uh, so I ha I only had eleven students to start with. Uh, two of them. I knew uh, they didn't self-identify immediately, but I, because my son also has dyslexia and another LD, I knew that they had some learning challenges. So I, you know, spoke to them and said, hey, look, these are things we can do, uh, which they did. And they were able to adjust like within the classroom and for their own homework exercises. And as we, so we had an unusual winter in Newfoundland because we also had a state of emergency due to a snowstorm. So we had a really short period at the end of January where um, we had a trial run that I did not realize was gonna be a trial run uh, where I went online and tried to keep the class going through the state of emergency. 
as much as I could. I didn't expect too much. Then the uh, COVID lockdown happened and everything changed, Dara. <laughs> so <laughs> it was, yeah. at the, the, the university gave us two weeks to set ourselves up, more like a week and a half maybe. Uh, but I said to my students, let's see what works for us because I didn't know what other people were going to be experiencing, but I knew that I had never done any online teaching at all similar to this. And like I said, it's writing. So, you know, the, yes, they were, do, they were writing lots and submitting individually to me, but there was still quite a bit of discussion that was happening in class. They were doing, uh, they were trading off, giving each other feedback. They were reading their dialogue to each other, you know, just the stuff that as screenwriters, all those little tools that help. So yeah. I knew that this was going to be more challenging to do online. The first thing we tried was using Facebook. Uh, I wasn't familiar with many of the teleconferencing platforms. I know Zoom way better now. <laughs> but at the time, I said, let's just try Facebook. So we tried a Facebook group. And the first night, it worked great. I you know, I wrote up the entire class exercises. I posted them in the top and in the, in the top um, post and then pinned it to the top so that they could always go back and catch up if they were losing their place or, or they fell behind. Um, but, and, and that worked. So I, then I would start a post for each exercise and they would uh, check in to say that they'd started. They would check in to say they'd finished. Then we did a little feedback on that post. Then when I moved to the next exercise, we started a new, new post. That worked great for the first class. The second class, we, I don't know what happened, but you know, Facebook is not reliable in any sense for anything mm -hmm. <laughs> I, would, I would caution. So the next week when I tried to do the exact same thing in the exact same way, suddenly the any post that a student made wasn't necessarily going to the one we were working on. I found myself having to move around the page to try and keep up with where they were. And in fact, even my own posts, I would think it was going to show up on a timeline in the post and it would end up at the bottom or at the very top. It got very confusing. And I knew that that was where I was going to lose my students who were struggling with learning disabilities. I knew they were going to be gone. In fact, two of them told me as soon as we went online that they were going to have challenges. One didn't have a computer at home, uh, which it, we tend to forget that. We're so used to being in front of our screens, but we tend to forget that they're students and sometimes they don't have it. I had international students. I had students from all kinds, you know, various uh, socioeconomic strata in the class. So it, it I, you know, suddenly I got a real good picture of where we were at. Um, and so then we really struggled to figure out what was going to work for everyone. I moved two of them onto email, the two that were really struggling. Uh, and that worked to some extent. We can talk more about it if someone wants to. Uh, that worked to some extent. It was challenging. They did still finish the course. They were the last two to finish. Um, but the other nine uh, really, uh, you know, clicked in and we made Facebook and Zoom work for us. We moved over to Zoom to do some face-to-face because -face we realized we needed it. And it was, Dara, it was amazing that the first time we all came back together for a Zoom conference, and it wasn't even all of us, it was just the nine. Mm -hmm. The look of relief on their faces, <laughs> you know, was amazing to me because I realized that they, all, now number one, they've been struggling with COVID and all the fear and information and everything that changed in their lives. Two of my students were got sent home. Um, one was an international student who had to stay, but had to move out of Munn's resident, the university's right. residence. So they, they had all kinds of personal things they were dealing with. So after three weeks, when they saw each other, it was heartwarming to me to see that they really had a new value for that personal touch. So that was really great. I'm going to stop talking because I don't want to <laughs> over talk about like 
that set up and, and, and get to more of your questions. Yeah, no, that's, I think you've actually answered a lot of the second question there as well. Um, just about the challenges that you faced, uh, you know, in learning. And it sounds like you just, you really had to be adaptable and flexible with how you offered the class, depending upon your students' needs and just the, the setup and their living situation, which I think a lot yeah. of our other instructors here can probably relate to. Um, mm -hmm. It sounds like, you know, there's, it's different from when everybody comes into a building. There's a, a bit of equity there in, in how everyone accesses the class. Yeah. But as soon as you go outside the building, things are completely different. So were there yeah. any other challenges outside of like the general kind of communication, participation, attendance that you and, and the tech challenges, obviously, that you wanted to share with us? Well, one interesting thing that happened, and I don't know what other, other teachers experience was, but I had... I, I knew my department head. I knew all the staff in the office. I work off campus. And mm. even though I teach on the campus uh, once a week, uh, I found I had way more communication suddenly with administration. I don't know what happened to their jobs, but I know that suddenly they really went into high gear. And I was so thankful for them for doing that because there was twice that I had to, I got so worried about one of my students, one of the LD students, because I, it didn't hear from him at all. Um, I was so worried. I didn't know, not know what happened. He wasn't checking in even by email. And so I reached out to them and said, I know this, I don't know what the ethics of this are, but I have to call my student. I don't, I, I need to just know where, where he's at, like not just with the course, but I just need to check in in on him. What do you suggest? And they said, yes, call him. This is a, re this is, these are extraordinary times, please do. So they gave me his phone number. And I, again, I don't know if, I mean, obviously they felt that there was a need. I, re I reached out to him. He answered with such surprise and delight. <laughs> and I, I instantly was relaxed because I said, okay, I was really worried about you. And he said, no, I don't have a computer at home. So I, I actually go out to do all the work. So it's been really challenging because everything's closed. I can't get online. I don't have Wi-Fi. <laughs> So it was a very simple explanation for something I didn't know. And the way that COVID snuck up on us, I had no idea that that was kind of the circumstances he was dealing with. So my good news story out of that is that within a week, he found a way to submit um, the assignment that was due. He submitted just, I, I gave him a, a little extension and he submitted just within two days of the extension being up, which was amazing. Did really well in the class. Uh, the other young woman really struggled. She, uh, you know, told me that she was on the, the autism spectrum and she was definitely having some challenges working at home because of distractions. But she also uh, finished and I gave her an incomplete at first. Uh, and then by the time the marks were due, uh, she submitted enough work. She didn't finish, but she submitted enough, enough work that I could actually give her a great grade. And the great, the biggest challenge uh, ended up being one of the triumphs because all the students, many of them were hovering, you know, around A level. They were, they were good writers. Um, in the end, I think only one did not get an A. Wow. So they really rose to the challenge. So, you know, some did A plus. They were, you know, they, there was just like different ranges obviously but I was amazed at how well they've done we we'd probably gotten to three quarters of the way in the semester but about uh, maybe a little less than that uh, in terms of their marking they some of them were a bit behind on some of their assignments but they'd all come through it was amazing so that was the biggest triumph was that they finished every single person finished in the end with a little bit of extra time and a little bit of extra coaching uh, and honestly, I, I felt by the end, they all had written an original first draft of a TV pilot. Most were 30 minute comedies. A couple were one hour dramas. And by the end, out of the 11, I felt like, like there was half of them that could be, that were pitchable, which is amazing. That is absolutely amazing. Um, yeah. Sounds like they really rose to the challenge themselves. Like you rose to the challenge for sure. <laughs> and they did as well. So it sounds like, uh, you know, in many ways, things almost 
turned out a little better than they might have in just the general classroom setup. I um, think so. And the other thing, of course, I didn't mention was Celtic's role in all this. And I certainly should be because I, I can't, I think you guys reached out with an email and I wrote you back and said, Hey, I'm doing this actually right this second. Um, and you offered me to like a, basically a classroom. So in, in addition to the online platforms that we were using, uh, we started using the Celtics uh, classroom platform so that they could actually submit to me and I could do notes in a much easier way than I was doing them by email. So right. that was a massive advantage. It was so helpful. That's great to hear. Yeah. Um, that that's yeah, that's, that's what we're here for basically. So it's, it's good to know that it helped. Um, and then we just have one last question for you, Ruth, basically just, um, you know, I know that I, I'm not sure if you're teaching in the fall semester at MUN or if you're winter semester only, but I know next semester at MUN is going to be online. Um, but regardless of whether you're going to be teaching online or in a classroom, were there things that you learned through this experience that you feel you can apply to future semesters to kind of make things run a little better for yourself and your students? Yeah, very much so. Um, uh, like you, I actually don't know if I'm going to be teaching next semester either because I've discovered now that this can be uh, taught online. So depending on what my university decides, it's possible. The other thing I did was because I had a, you know, a couple of struggles myself on, as the teacher because it all, you know, we uh, yes, we think about what the students' challenges are, but as teachers too, uh, you know, we had our own challenges. Like mm -hmm. not only were we at home you know, with our family suddenly and in, you know, uncertain circumstances and uncertain times, uh, all that we had those exact same pressures, but still had to kind of lead this, these classes as if we didn't, <laughs> you know, mm. as much as possible. So some of it I thought was really interesting. Like there were, we all learned lessons in humanity and how, uh, how to, uh, be just a little more flexible be a little more relaxed um, and I, sh I shouldn't say relaxed, but f flexible bendability was huge. And we work, you know, I work in the arts, so we thrive on limitations. Like that's how we're sometimes the most creative. And I felt like that was a little bit of a gift in a way because we, I, I, I went, looked at, I, I was able to look at like, what are the limitations of this, um, and, and how do I make the best of it? So I really feel like in the end, certainly the students, I mean, we did our final, what we did in the final uh, class, cause I really felt like I just needed to lift everything up a little bit. So I reached out to a bunch of my actor friends. Um, I really experienced amazing actors who were also all home with no next opportunity to, to perform. So I reached out to a bunch of them and said, Hey, look, this is a freebie, but how do you feel about reading some, you know, brand new scripts uh, for possibly some potential TV shows down in the future? Would you be willing to, to give us some, some of your time? And they, every single person I asked said yes. So I was able to take a few days, cast, I think we did a five to seven minute section of everyone's script. So everyone heard got to hear at least seven minutes of their TV shows read by really good professional actors who had the time to read their synopsis, read their character descriptions, read their scripts, and give them a really great, uh, it was like a little graduation gift is what it, <laughs> what it felt like. So we did that over Zoom. Uh, I think we had, had to do seven sessions to get everyone in, but oh, it was such a, boon for them like it made such a difference and so so I have, have been thinking okay what happens if I do this next time from day one so um, a showrunner named Jill Golick G-O-L-I-C-K has um, I, within the first few days of the pandemic I couldn't believe it she posted on this website this writer's website I'm a part of she posted what she called the 14-day pandemic pilot program so if you were self-isolating for 14 days, that she had, she set out 14 days, how you could write your first draft of a, of a one hour drama. So I 
uh, once I was finished my course, I reached out to the community and said, who, who, who has an idea for a TV script that they want to try and write next month? So I doubled the time because I knew what my work was like because I've continued to work. <laughs> and I, uh, so I said, okay, I, I can probably do this in 28 days. Who else wants to join me? So we've doubled up on the time that we've given ourselves, but we're using Jill's program. And I think I'm leading... Uh, we started it with 15, three dropped out almost immediately because it is a lot of work, um, but we're doing it. And I think we've still got 12 people who are still participating and we're, we are now in our last week. So we'll finish on Sunday coming. And that's been a great test pilot project because I really wanted to see how to begin the class and how to end it. Her program is not quite, like it's, it's for experienced writers. So as I got started, I realized, oh, some of mine, some of my students, my friends were newbies and they needed more teaching. So I had to uh, integrate some of my sort of classwork, lecture work into the, the pilot program. But for experienced writers, oh my God, it's amazing. It actually gives you deadlines, uh, sets you up like to get started and gives you all the it's almost like a paint by numbers, you know, if you want to look at it that way. Uh, so it was amazing. And I'm, and I decided to, to do it myself and to write as I was teaching too. So I'm co-writing a one hour drama with someone right now, a pilot. And yeah, thanks to this, we'll have it done this month. So that's been, so I've taken the experience from last term. I did another little test and I, like now I feel I'm prepared to go if anyone wants um if anyone wants a link to that or actually i don't know if i have a link to it i have a pdf so i don't know how i might be able to get that to people dare if they want it but jill said to share it widely oh no that's perfect um if you want to just send that to me after the webinar i'll make sure it goes out with our resources um yeah. It's interesting because when I was doing up a resource list for the webinar, I said, okay, well, let me find some people who are teaching online and, mm -hmm. and say to instructors, you know, why don't you see how this person does it or how that person does it? Because it'll give you some more um, just experience and seeing how a class is being held online right from the start. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's really great. Um, and just, it's interesting how you mentioned, you know, that, the actors reading for them. I know when I was uh, showing you Celtics, one of the things that we talked about was the, um, the read out loud function that we have. Yeah, the read um, through is amazing. Yeah. So this is like, you know, having an actual live actor read it is even better, uh, obviously, but you do need to hear a script read out loud to understand. It's essential. Yeah. yeah. You never know what your dialogue is. And, you know, most screenwriters know to read out loud to themselves, but you know, that's still not the greatest of, you're not necessarily the greatest of, um, no. um, you know, hearing it, saying it and hearing it at the same time is not yeah. the best, easiest way. And you're way. always married to your darlings a little too. So it's always better to hear someone else read it and kind of stumble on something that you wouldn't have or, you know, I think that's, that's a really great option. And it's great that the arts community in general is just very giving like that. So I think oh, maybe yeah. some of our other instructors here might have connections in their local communities where they could consider bringing that in next Definitely. semester. Yeah. I just saw so, someone else posted about the read out loud. Yes. It's, it's essential. If you're writing, you have to hear it out loud. There's no other, there's no yeah. alternative. <laughs> Absolutely. So on that note, we actually, uh, the next part of our webinar is actually going to be turned over to you. And by you, I mean all of our participants today, Fabulous. everyone who's attending. So, you know, Ruth has shared some of her experiences, some of her challenges and triumphs. And we were wondering if anyone else out there um, has anything they would like to share. If you do, we'd ask you to just raise your hand and we'll go ahead and tell everyone that you're about to speak and let you speak. You can also feel free to ask questions to Ruth or us here at Celtics at this time. The only thing I would ask about that is if your question is kind of general Celtics support related question, please keep it for after the webinar. You can reach out to us at support at Celtics.com and just try and keep it about like teaching online basically. So if anybody has anything they'd like to contribute Contribute, please do go ahead and just raise your hand and let us know. I'm sure there's a lot of experience out there that's uh, very shareable right now. 
Yeah, I'm just seeing uh, someone just posted about like how like you know the HP laptops can't handle it's it's really hard. I like adapting every assignment for the software that people are working on. <laughs> like yeah, I I hear you. It's really challenging. I I don't actually know the answer to that one because um yeah, it's 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 something that's very personal, I guess, like what the student brings with them or or what the what the school has to offer. So yeah, that's definitely a challenge. Maybe someone else has a, has a, has a thought on uh, something that's a little bit more user friendly. Yeah. And I noticed Christina had asked a question earlier when the, uh, when it first started. So Christina's teaching in production and maybe someone else in the community here can help with this. I know Heather uh, posted a response there to your question, Christina, in the Q&A. But Christina's asking about, you know, part of her, her um, mm -hmm. what she's working on is teaching students how to use a camera and how to compose shots. So Christina, I don't know if you've experienced the shot blocker in Celtics. That is a way that you can kind of take that lesson on shot composition yeah. and show it to students on screen. Obviously, they're not actually handling the tools and setting it up. Um, you know, I know, I know a lot of kids like do things like Lego movies and stuff where they kind of do the same kind of thing, but using the shot blocker, they may be able to at least use the equipment functionality in that and um, Kind of set up what their shots should look like and then they can submit that to you you can review it and be like okay you didn't consider lighting in this circumstance or you didn't consider how your crew could walk in the view of the camera here or you know whatever i have a really interesting story from when i was a teenager i met a director of photography who was telling me about shooting a movie with liza minnelli in a ballet studio where there's mirrors on three walls and just the, the work they had to go through to make sure that nobody showed in those mirrors while they were filming was fascinating. And he had to use a lot of diagrams. And basically, there were X's on the floors and people had to stand and not move while they were shooting. So the shot blocker kind of lets you do that in a digital realm. Mm -hmm. so have a couple other the other questions. thing I was going to say, oh, is there another one? I was going to say that one, one other thing I just wanted to quickly throw in there is, um, and this doesn't work for everyone I know, but one of the things I made more use of because I lost the interaction that they had in the classroom, what I did was I set them up to uh, give feedback to each other online. So we would kind of, so if I, if I was using Facebook or Zoom, I would say, okay, now email, I would give them who their partner was going to be, and then they do a feedback swap, always including me, of course, so that I could see what kind of feedback they were giving and getting. Uh, and then I could add to it because of course it's when you're writing, it's a, if it's a writing course, mm -hmm. there's always so much more correcting and reading. It takes a lot of time anyway. And then it was just going to be compounded more because besides the assignments uh, that they had to pass in, suddenly all the in-class exercises had also to be all written and notated in writing. So it took an enormous way. I was working way more teaching online than I had been when I was teaching in class. That was the other thing that was not quite considered. I mean, we were lucky because people weren't able to work at other things, but the institutions also have to realize that if they're going online, there's way more work. I don't know that they're really prepared for that, but that's, they're going to hear that from teachers. I don't know if anyone else has that experience, but certainly, you know, my five hour class with correcting, which was probably like about a 10 or 12 hour week turned into anywhere from 20 to 25 hours. It doubled easily. Wow. Yeah. I think that's a fairly common, um, I know as a parent at home, I'm finding yeah just supporting my kids in their learning has taken a lot longer, takes, you know, so I can only longer. imagine for instructors how much, even just having to do one-on-ones with students, it's not like pulling them aside as they walk into the classroom. You know, you've got to actually seek them out, find them. Even just that, um, we notice it here at work too, like communication does become, when everyone's working from home, a bit of an issue. We do have um, Kurt who was going to uh, add something. So I'm going to go ahead and let you talk there, Kurt. You should be un muted no nope, you're not sorry one second okay there you go can you, can you hear me 
Thank you. Look, um, I'm just wanting to back you up with what you've just said about the the situation of double work time. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that we're going to have to sit down with our unions if we have unions and have a very good conversation with them. Um, I do it out of the love of it, but I know that some teachers are just pulling their hair out. It's 4.13 a.m. here in Australia at the moment. So oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> I'm happy to, happy to join in this because I really wanted to be a part <laughs> of it. Uh, I, lo I just love Celtic. So um, not to sort of advertise on your behalf, but uh, I've used Celtics now for about the last 10 years for personal projects, but I'm, I'm loving using it with my students. And I'm talking about primary year students here. And my primary students are everything from prep which is i think probably five-year-olds six-year-olds wow 12 year olds and uh so our preps and grade ones are participating for the first time so i'm very that excited about that is so <laughs> amazing i'm so delighted to hear, hear hear that you're using it to teach those young kids that is amazing yeah, no uh, and yeah to go back to your point about union totally like i i like it's going to be really interesting to see how they're going to accommodate for all that. Cause yeah, it's, it's double the work. Someone, someone told me that um, they were really worried about their job security because they felt that once it got online and once the instructors had all that work done that they wouldn't need the instructors. And I was like, you gotta be kidding me. That is like, we're more needed than ever. <laughs> yeah. That's my perspective. I don't know about you, Kurt. Uh, uh, I agree. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's uh, that's something I'm hearing a lot, and I've got to say, Kurt, uh, a lot of our Australian clients are are working with younger students, and it seems like just such a great um, culture you have over there, where you're you're teaching writing really young in Australia, and it's just amazing. I love seeing primary schools come in because <laughs> I just picture the cute little kids writing away on their computers but you know uh, I think it's amazing that you're exposing children to those learning uh, opportunities at a young age you know it's it's really great thank you so um, I'm just taking a quick look here if uh, if there's any other questions if everyone else wants to raise their hand or um, if you have yeah. something you want to stick in the chat there I know not everyone's comfortable like talking we, yeah Sorry, we got Jim that. alone there I think Oh, okay. Do you want to just go ahead and let him talk, Rob? Um, no, I don't see a mic there for okay. him, funny enough. Oh, it looks oh, like... there he is. I got it there. Perfect. Right. Can you guys hear me now? Yes, we can. Thanks, Jim. Great. Uh, thanks for uh, hosting this, and, and thanks for the folks that have been posting list of resources, too. I teach middle school in the Bronx in New York City, and uh, I my full-time engagement there is is a english language arts but i'm an independent filmmaker myself and, and just a love of of the collaborative nature of filmmaking and i got a, i got funding last year to start a media arts program with our seventh graders and what we did wow. last year was um we used celtics for for the script writing stuff that they were doing uh, and then we also use quite a bit of um, resources like um, Google Sheets for their pre-production list and their planning and uh, and sharing um, uh, information that that way. And uh, did a lot of hands-on work with cameras and lighting and, and audio and that kind of stuff, starting with some tiny programs, or I'm sorry, some tiny projects of just, you know, introduce yourself in 45 seconds mm -hmm. without saying any words you just just oh. you know, just pictures just show us who you are by either showing yourself in action or showing the world around you and what you value and what and what you cherish uh and then all That's the way nice. up all the way up through um some little projects of uh a, a, a new story about something happening at school you know a new faculty member that you interviewed or an event coming up uh and then we got into um, some more complicated things and it was supposed to culminate in uh, the kids at our school go to a, a three-week summer camp up in Lake Placid in upstate New York in the Adirondack Mountains and last year uh, we did a couple of horror films the boys are at one camp and the girls are at another and it was like an eight right. minute horror film uh, at a summer <laughs> camp and, and they were amazing <laughs> they just did such a great job but the thing that I love most of all is I mean, I've, I've tried to do group classroom work 
uh, and anybody that's a teacher here, you know, when you try to do group work and try to have meaningful group work, that doesn't just feel like time filling busy work is a challenge, but the filmmaking stuff really seems to make a huge difference because they get really dialed into it. Um, and e even to the point where I let them pick their lead producer and then the producer um, interviewed people on their team and assigned them roles, everything from camera to audio. Uh, <laughs> wow. Everything else. Because they knew each other and they knew each other's comfort level with stuff. So they all had to learn basic stuff, but then, but then they were able toward the end of the year to pick the things that they were kind of gravitating towards. I um, love that you were able to pivot the learning in that way. And I think you're, I totally agree with you about like, like how that teamwork on a film, I mean, that's what, filmmaking is it's yeah. such a great way to learn it but also even that individual assignment of you know tell us who you are with no words that is a great like that's a great way that can bring like the most introverted introvert out of their shell yeah that's well, that's really and, beautiful and we found that our introverts um love non-linear editing you, you get them in yeah. their Premiere Pro and they just, they just blossom like crazy. Um, I, I would love to, uh, we did have some challenges with, with Celtics with sharing uh, a project and being able to work on something simultaneously on different computers and having the updates to, to a script showing up in more real time. I don't know if that's improved over the past couple of months. This was earlier in the year when they were working on some stuff that, uh, they ran into that and so a couple of them even moved back over to like a google doc where they could see and then they they could see it more immediately and then they would bring it back into celtics but i didn't know if i didn't know if that was a problem with a lag at our end or if you guys had run into a issues with that or. yeah that should not have been a problem um the only time when we see that happening is when we have and sorry correct me if i you are are currently in one of our education studios, right, Jim? You're at St. Ignatius, am yes, I correct? Yes, St. Ignatius, yep. Okay, I couldn't, I was like, okay. There's a lot of names I have to remember over to the over the years, but um, so that shouldn't have been an issue. We do sometimes have that with free um, people using the studio, and I'm just checking. Okay, so Jim, actually, uh, yeah, that's probably a nature of how your studio is set up. So after this call, I'm going to put you in touch with um, our sales team, get you on the free trial so you can get the real-time collaboration on the free trial Great. and uh, and get that all set up so that, you know, going forward, you'll be able to use the real-time collaboration. Wonderful. Yeah, because yeah. we so I'm pretty sure we were using that gym and it was showing up right away, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's, I just noted that Christina said, um, you know, she just talked about burnout and yeah, that's it's a real issue. Like it is something that as instructors and teachers, we do have to bring people's attention to it because it, it was an emergency. There wasn't, yeah. nothing was planned. It all got thrust upon us so fast. And then like, I, I mean, I said I had, you know, a week and a half, two weeks to plan for one, my one course, but many of you are teaching multiple courses with much bigger classrooms. So it's, yeah, I, I, I feel for you. I can't even imagine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I hope that all of your districts are really supporting you through this time. Um, I know sometimes the public support isn't always there. And as a member of the public, I want to personally say, I don't feel that way at all. Um, and, you know, if you ever hear those kinds of comments, please just brush them off because the majority mm -hmm. of the students and their parents that are working with you, we all appreciate you so much, especially yeah. at this time. And the amount yeah. of work that everyone's putting in is so very obvious. Yeah. Um, so I really hope that, you know, you're all feeling a little more comfortable with things. Um, you know, as, as time has progressed and, and as we start making plans for September and the fall, that you're feeling a little more kind of grounded on what it is that you need in terms of resources. And if there's anything on Celtic's side that we can provide in resources, we would love to hear from you. Um, I will let you know that one of the projects that I personally am working on over this uh, kind of period with an instructor whose classes were basically canceled because of COVID um, is um, <clears throat> a uh, lesson plan for our schools. So we're hoping by September 
to be able to, as Ruth was mentioning earlier, you know, where you're, you're observing an online class to try and figure out how are you going to present this in an online mode uh, in, in a lesson plan. We're working with one of our instructors who uh, is a fairly new instructor and works with a lot of challenging students. So I feel like his experience is really great. And uh, he's helping me develop some lesson plans that we'll be able to share with all instructors. So once you come back in the fall, you'll have kind of a roadmap to how do I teach all of this online? Um, so hopefully that will help everyone out as well. And there are also, uh, besides that 14 day, um, program that screen screenwriting program that I was that I mentioned if anyone on here is teaching you know similar same type of um, course that I am I'm more than happy to compare what I'm doing with what you're doing give you ideas of how I dealt with some of my uh, my well how I was dealing with my course pre-COVID and then post so uh, yeah, just I, I, I would leave that to you communicating through Dara, but you can also like she'll reach out and connect yeah. us or something. Definitely. And on the same token, if there's anyone else um, attending today who feels like, you know, you can maybe mentor someone else through this, you've developed some great resources of your own. Um, Heather's shared some amazing ones there earlier that I haven't had a chance to look into fully, but you know, if there's anyone out there who feels like, um, there's things that they can share with the whole community. Please do reach out to me after this webinar and let me know how you'd like to communicate that. If you just want to send me some resources and I send them out, or if you want to share your email address with people, I know that can be a little uh, scary sometimes. Um, we also do have some resources that we ourselves have gathered. Um, before we go into that though, I do see a question there from Denise. So Denise is asking, um, you know, for yourself, Ruth, and anyone else who would like to contribute, what everyone's doing to um, engage your students at this time. So I know that that's a, a question that a lot of people are struggling with right now. We see it coming back from a lot of instructors uh, and I myself having children see that. So if anyone mm -hmm. has any, um, anything they'd like to contribute on that, that would be great before we move into a, sort of our cluing up here. Yeah, Brad just had us, he's, making yeah. a suggestion there and the one thing I guess I would say is um, certainly from my experience was I just broke down my assignments into smaller pieces so instead mm -hmm. of giving um, you know one bigger exercise to do I made them smaller because uh, and, and I don't know actually if you're teaching uh, your, if your question applies to younger students or not but uh, often there's a lot of competition for that screen uh, for entertainment, for other people's work, for other students. So uh, just bear in mind, and I'm sure you all know this anyway, that the, the time is limited, that they're probably going to be able to be in front of their screen. So I, I, that's what I did. I just broke the assignments down way smaller and, and parsed them out a little bit more often because uh, that, I think, was one of the things that some of my students were struggling with. Right. Yeah, and yeah. that's something myself as a parent, you know, um, I've shared with Ruth, I have a couple of kids with ADHD, and that's something that I notice when they get those massive assignments come, they just, they're overwhelmed, and they, they can't focus on even getting started, because they're just thinking about everything that needs to be done. So certainly, um, breaking things up into really digestible small chunks, and making people feel like, you know, nobody understands what's going on in the student's home necessarily. So making them feel like they can do a bit of it and then maybe go away for a bit and come back and do a bit more, I think would be really helpful as well. Um, it can be very overwhelming if you feel like, oh, well, I've already missed three classes. What's the point now? You know, and that's mm -hmm. something that we do hear from a lot of instructors as well that, you know, getting students re-engaged. And Ruth, I know you did a great job of it with your students that just getting them re-engaged is, is hard. Even once you have them engaged, once they drop yeah. out of in the yeah. engagement, it's getting them re-engaged is a struggle as well. Yeah, and, bo and both of those students that I did had to reach out to because they've fallen so far away. And, and like you said, getting, they got so far behind. Both of them, like within minutes of talking to them on the phone, mm -hmm. were energized again. Under, like with, were, I think, the fear was that I would not understand some of the struggles they were having. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I said, look, I am worried about you, but, but 
I also want to, I'm, I'm reaching out because I want you to finish this. And I think once they saw that that was important to me as well as to them, that made all the difference. Right. There's a tip there from Brandon as well, where he's saying that uh, he's, he's teaching high school and he said he's giving yeah. them class challenges instead, which is really great because then nobody feels like the weight is fully on them to get everything yeah, done. Yeah, exactly. Right? And, it, and time limits are good. Like saying yeah. you have an hour or you have 30 minutes to do this thing because sometimes that's all they have in front of that screen. So yeah, like take 15 minutes. I, I also, when we were writing, I used the sprint uh, philosophy, of course. So we were, so we would, we would be on, on online in class together, but then I would say, okay, now, you know, turn off all your messages, go and write for 25 minutes or 15 minutes, whatever. And we, we did all of our writing that way. So yeah, this breaking down assignments and then giving time limits, it, it, they come back with something. They will come back with something. Yeah, I see, Elisa, they're saying, you know, do dates matter? And and that's certainly true. I can say as a parent, you know, when my kids are told, well, you can submit that sometime, it's very different from when they know they have to do something immediately. Um, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> or within the next week, you know, it's uh, priorities. And we experience it ourselves at work, you know, when you have a project long term that you're working on, and then more immediate priorities come up, the long term project gets pushed to the side, it always does. And I think that's something that everyone struggles with, not just students. Exactly. We're getting some really great resources here in the chat. So what we're going to do, I know it's Nicole, excellent. If you don't mind uh, just switching, because we're getting to the end here, if you don't mind just moving ahead to the next slide, Nicole. Um, I did up some resources before this webinar, but what I'm seeing here in the chat is that there's some really great additional resources being shared. Mm -hmm. So we will be sharing these slides with everyone who's attending, but um, I'm going to take an extra day or two to get everything out to everyone so that I can take all these resources that have been shared here as well, as well as the resource that Ruth was mentioning earlier. Um, and kind of compile them all together so that you get everything. So you'll be receiving the recording of the webinar. You'll be receiving this list of resources and all the resources that are being mentioned in the chat. And then, like I said, um, if there's anyone who after this webinar feels like they have more information they can give to people, more tips, uh, resources, please, my email address is just dara at caltex.com. You would have received a couple of emails from me over the last week about this webinar, so you should be able to find it easily in your inbox. Um, and just feel free to just go ahead and share those so I can do that up as a, as a great resource for everyone. What we'll do is we'll put it on an online web page and host it with the video and all of the resources there. So you can come back at any time and find it. Um, the other thing, if people are not familiar with uh, Zoom, they can save the chat. It saves it as yes. a Word document. Yeah. So just go to, I can't, I can't actually I see where it is here, but it's the three little dots. So yeah, the three dots. And three it's little dots chat. there on the side. It, so you'll have this. And I want to quickly answer, um, say thank you to Heather for the flip grid. I'm going to look at, yeah. look at that actually. And hence answer. I think it was Jesse asked how long my classes were. They were really long. It was supposed it, like, so the course is set up for two, three hour classes per week. And when they combine them in one night, it was a one, four and a half hour course a class. So it was really long. So what I what I did when I moved online was I shortened that uh, by an hour. So we still dedicated ourselves to meet because the, the, most of the students were still on a schedule with their, their other classes, but I shortened it by an hour. We started an hour later. And like I said, they would join onto the platform and then they'd step away to do their writing and they'd come back. But we still kept going for three hours a night, four and a half was wow. just too way too long. It was too long for me. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Um, okay, so oh, we do have one more question come in. It's just a thank you. You're very welcome, Pat. And thank you all of you for attending and participating. Um, like I said, the discussion doesn't end here. So we'll continue this on. We'll be sharing more information and more resources. And if you have more questions, do feel free to send those along. Um, like I said, you will get the recording. Um, 
I just might take an extra couple of days just to make sure that we have everything compiled together and you're not getting five different emails from me. Um, there will be an email uh, tomorrow with a survey uh, that, you know, I'd really appreciate if you guys could fill out and just let us know because this was our first webinar in this series. Uh, it's our first time offering webinars in quite a while. We'd really like your feedback on how we did with this and, uh, you know, changes and improvements that you'd like to see so we can continue to offer quality content to all of you. So it was great seeing everyone. I'm going to go ahead and stop our recording now.